I'm going to pull these solar panels out right now. You have to pull out evenly on both sides, otherwise they get caught. All right, so that is how you set up a solar electric camper van for a morning charge. Let's see what we can get today. Have a look-see here. We are pulling in 408 watts of solar power there. So that's awesome. This is our external solar panel. I harvested this one off the back of the van right there. So the weather's supposed to stay like this for at least another day. We're gonna make a break for the Arctic Circle tomorrow. Um, we have extra solar, we have running water. So we have an electric hot water system. Basically, it's hot straight off of the tap. Everything's electric. Basically, you can plug any electrical appliance you want. We have a full-size 90-liter fridge. Um, so basically, plenty of room. It's a huge deep fridge, it's on wheels. There's enough power in this van to run anything electric. So there's zero gas, zero fossil fuels used for even cooking in the van. The van's been charging. I need probably another maybe 30 watts to get to my next destination. I don't know, it's kind of hard to say, but I need probably between a quarter and half a tank of electricity. It sounds so funny talking about tanks of electricity, but uh, that's what we're dealing with here. Yeah, look at that setup. This thing's a UFO out in the Arctic, so we're, we're achieving dreams. My current personal mission is to drive a solar powered van from Alaska to Argentina. Ultimately, the reason why I chose the Americas is because it has the longest navigable road in the world, the Pan America Highway from Alaska down to Argentina. And I really wanted to make a statement with electrification and renewable energies. I wanted to show the world that there's no reason why we can't transition to renewable energies right now. I'm just gonna show you quickly how I climb hills. In front of me I have this big hill and what I do is you can see the load here. I try to keep that load as low as possible up hills because what I find is I lose most of my range up hills and I'm making great mileage because I'm trying my best to keep the car under 30 miles an hour. And I have about 160 miles to drive. I'm making great mileage. See that blue bar? That means I'm regenerating energy back into my bank. When I came up with this idea to travel with solar power, particularly in a van, I thought there's got to be other people out here who've done it. Brett Beelan at Solar Roller had produced a solar powered VW bus, a combi van. When I saw that, I immediately called him and, and that's how I ended up building the van with Solar Roller. Brett is pulling the van forward. You're all right, pull forward. Keep coming. All right, we can reach. Oh, I heard the relay. <laughs> it snapped. It clicked. It we started with a 100 mile EV van to start with. It's a 2010 International E Star. It was a delivery van for Pacific Gas and Electric. Yes, I had. And then basically all we did was we retrofitted a off grid solar charging system to make the van run completely on solar power. There she blows. Okay, let's see it draw more energy and then we can go up to the inverter real quick and see what's happening. Let me see how much we're drawing. 4.5. It's not even much. That's why it charges so slowly, Brett. Now we go. Because the charger now on board. All right, unplug it. All right, that's exciting stuff. We're charging off of ourselves, and we know that it only pulls 4.4 kilowatts. Uh, knowing that we can pull more than that from our batteries means that possibly, possibly there's a chance that we can make the system charge the van a bit quicker, which will be handy when we're charging off of solar power. So as far as I know, these are the largest flexible panels you can get. 
um, any larger and they obviously become quite a handful. So they're about seven feet by about 30 inches. So we got our thousand water rays together. You know, the challenge here is to keep them thin. They're only an inch wide, so to get stiffness out of something that thin is, is challenging. We had a problem with sagging, so we added a little quarter inch strip. So the flexible panels with our own frame design gives us the opportunity to get all of this solar 7,200 watts up top for under 400 pounds. So because this is a international slash modec from the UK vehicle, it's really hard to just add solar panels. It's really hard to just add some more batteries. So what we've had to do is essentially put a onboard charger on this vehicle. So we have a 48 volt pack of lithium polymer batteries and the solar panels will come through these charge controllers and charge that pack. So right here we have our voltmeters which represent each end of our 40 kilowatt hour pack. So there's 13 cells in series. Between these two you have 84 cells. So what I can do is I can keep an eye on this end, I keep an eye on this end, and what I'm looking for is consistency. Right here you can see we have one cell string that's running a little low, so we'll pick that up, and so we'll balance this out, and then this is how we keep an eye on the health of our lithium pack. But we're gonna, we're gonna see between five and six kilowatts actually getting into those batteries for hopefully up to 10 hours a day. So that's gonna give us 50 or more kilowatt hours that we can put into our pack and we're seeing 100 miles at about 60. So we're hoping to get over 50 miles of range each day. Yeah, we're finally getting our arrays together. There's gonna to be one fixed panel on the top. It's gonna to bolt through here and there's gonna be one more. And then underneath that we have two drawers. So these here pull out and there'll be some arms that come out and hold them about halfway. So we have to build our hinges now. We bought three X-Ball 3,000 pound winches. Hit out, and out comes our winch. So that cable will go all the way up to an arm on our uh, array up here. It's going to pull the array down, and you could imagine a big table pretty much tipping onto its side and able to track the sun so that we get full use of our solar panels. It works! So I just stepped out the door, and that's what I'm looking at. Big ocean lakes. We are definitely in Alaska. So quiet. This is our first real test. I'm going to roll out the solar arrays once I plug the car in and see how much energy I can pull in. I put all of my arrays out. The clouds decided to uh, come over at the precise moment that I decided to set up my, my array there. I'm going to jump back in and I'm going to see again, but it wasn't crazy high. Yeah, we got 2,700 kilowatts of solar coming in there. The sun's just come out a bit here, so I'm going to quickly jump inside and see what's going on with those. So you can see it climbing, 2,900, no, it's dropping again, see the clouds come over and then it drops down again. On a nice sunny day, we won't have to worry about that. I don't know how many of those days we're going to get until I get out of these mountains here. But uh, I'm out here in the Yukon, charging my solar electric camper van. <laughs> We drove 70.1 miles to a place called Toad River. It is really cold, we're both freezing. We had to climb a pretty big couple of hills to get here, so our mileage wasn't so great, but we did a bunch of regen on the way back down, and it's sort of creeping back up there, but I don't think we're gonna get full mileage, so 
We're gonna set up some panels and wait for the sun in the morning and see if we can't get over these big mountains. We are running very low we are running and we still need to get out of these goddamn mountains. So we used a lot of energy getting up the hill, like a lot, a lot, a lot of energy. And like in two charges, we've almost only just made over a hundred miles as opposed to 200 miles. We've got T minus three or four hours before the snowstorm for the next like four days is gonna hit as well. Pretty sure it snowed a fair bit last night. Holy. This did not have any snow yesterday. That is our exit point. This is looking like it's going to be our second full day trapped in the snow. We've got a minimal charge. The next town is 70 miles away. We can probably get 30 miles with what we've got left. So it's day three after the snowstorm. We're getting to the bare basics of our food. We're almost out. Coffee, heat of peanut butter. From when I looked up the weather a couple of days ago, it was sunny tomorrow. So I'm really hoping. Look at this, water dripping. It's been a pretty good day for solar so far. Nearly 10 kilowatts come in. Say if tomorrow is sunny, as sunny as today, then we will have enough solar to leave here and make it to Fort Nelson. Do you remember how to drive this thing? Fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> We're rolling up into Fort Nelson. We have that much charge left and we have about six miles to drive and in any minute now when this line drops below that line we're going to get a low voltage warning and we don't know what that means yet we probably should work out what that means but let's wait for it because we're going 10 miles an hour. <laughs> hey, we gotta get that range. <laughs> you definitely have to travel extremely slow in a heavy vehicle like mine. For some, it doesn't make sense because they're in this rush mentality of getting somewhere really quick and fast. But for sure, in this circumstance, you've got to kind of let go of the whole entitlement of getting somewhere when you say you want to get somewhere. It's a whole lot more like sailing. A lot of people try to achieve super efficient sailing and they want to travel faster than the wind can take them and all of that sort of stuff. But most of the people who are sailing on the ocean are sort of just going with the flow and traveling when the wind allows them. And yeah, this is kind of like the land version of that where you're sort of, you're relaxing and, and sort of enjoying and just sort of let nature take control and sort of go with the flow and, and the sun and the rain and the wind and all of that sort of stuff. So it is foggy AF outside, not the greatest, but uh, we're making like just under four kilowatts, which is pretty, pretty average for us. And it's foggy outside. I don't know, to me that seems like a really cool observation. Fog doesn't really affect our our solar capabilities. Yeah, so so that's four over four kilowatts today already. We pulled in seventeen point eight plus two point eight kilowatt hours. We are all about comfort. We're like, what can we bring to pass the time between charges? Basically, we, we drive maybe 10% of the time that we're traveling. And the other 90% of the time, we're sort of sitting still waiting for the sun to, to charge the battery so that we can travel that, you know, 100 to 200 miles again off of the sun. So, yeah, we're all about comfort. We're like, you know, 
How can we have a better kitchen? How can we have a nice bed? How can we feel comfortable and happy in the spaces that we end up in when we're charging? We are a little bit more than halfway full. So probably by the end of today, can solar roll on out of this paradise. Just gonna see if this works. Nice. Van is set up, directly charging our batteries and I've been under the van all morning. I've been running wires so that I can have a second charging port so that I don't have to run this cable the whole way up and out the window there. I got my J1772 plug, the electric vehicle charger is working and there is my port. All I have to do is plug it in. Ready? Moment of truth. There's no how-to step-by-step guides for building one of these things. Would you look at that guys, it works. I'm pretty stoked that we got up charging from the inside of the van. I would recommend it to others, but I would put a clause in there that they would be prepared for all of the unknowns and all of the difficulties of making something like this. I am gonna go flick this van around ready for the morning charge. Also, yeah, there's the need for technology to catch up. I'm gonna move these panels. The sun is moving away from them. I think once we get panels that are over 30% efficient in the consumer market, that's when it starts to sort of make a little bit more sense to start putting solar panels on vehicles more regularly. At the current juncture, we're not really there yet. We are waiting for that technology to catch up, but it doesn't mean that it's impossible right now. It is possible, as you can see, by the amount of miles and kilometers that I've traveled in my vehicle. 